it's a big adventure bike so you've got to treat it with a bit of respect when it comes to going off-road sorry wheels i didn't mean to break your motorcycle this ladies and gentlemen is a the aprilia tureg tureg tarango turugo tureg it's the Aprilia answer to the Tenere 700, the KTM 890 Adventure. This is Aprilia's new shot at that middleweight adventure market. This bike is 187 kilos dry. It comes with knobbly tires. It's got 240 millimeter travel suspension front and back. So this is being targeted as a, as a very off-road, on-road, probably a 50-50 onto off-road ratio motorcycle for those fellas and lasses who like to get themselves a little bit mucky. So today we're going to go out on this, give us a full test on road with a little bit of light off road. This is actually Wheels Motorcycles demo machine. Bloody phone. This is actually Wheels Motorcycles demo machine. So I've got to be a little bit careful. So a bit of light green laning I had permission for, for this video. But this bike, it's quite off road focused. So it almost seems pointless just to do a, a road review on it without getting it a little bit mucky on top. So join me for a little bit of off road on road and I'll tell you all about Aprilia's new adventure middleweight machine. Chopsy, roll the intro. Morning. <laughs> So unusually, I'm actually going to start this video on the green lane. <laughs> I'm not even going to make you wait to watch my incompetence off-road. We're just going to get straight into it. Get it out of the way, is my thinking. So sitting on it, the first thing you notice about this bike is it's actually very, very big. For like a middleweight adventure bike, it feels as big as any other adventure bike, really. Very high up at the front, bit Africa Twin-like, sort of the high front end, 18-litre fuel tank, high wide bars, very, very comfortable seat, and also masses of suspension travel. I mean, this thing has 240 millimeters of suspension travel front and back. So that's a serious off-road capability with that suspension. Let's have a little bit of a sound check. Sounds pretty decent, actually. I think there's a lot of Typical Italians, you know, there's a lot of induction roar. They actually, Italians really do know how to make their bikes sound decent and still meet the, uh, the Euro standards. I don't know how they do it, actually. I don't know how the Italians get their bikes to sound decent and meet Euro standards, but they seem to do it, don't they? Oh, here we go, off-road. I mean, it's a big adventure bike, so you've got to treat it with a bit of respect when it comes to going off-road. But... It's got an off-road mode, which reduces the power, makes it a softer power delivery, softer torque delivery, obviously winds back the ABS a little bit. That's full throttle and it's not really spinning up. Not another card. Struggling to do the gears with my great big hoofing off-road boots. But this is, I think, this is why I took this bike off-road, because it wouldn't really be much of a review if we didn't just get a bit of a feel for it off-road. I mean, I'm not an experienced off-road rider, so... You know, this is kind of not going to be an exhaustive test, but oh, that's, well, that's quaggy and slippery. But, you know, we can have a look. I can tell you, I have ridden the 890 Adventure off-road, so, you know, feels quite similar to that. It's actually a little bit lighter than the 890 Adventure, funnily enough. This is 204 kilos, fully fueled, so 187 kilos dry so that is 10 kilos lighter than the 890 adventure and when you're going off-road you know weight is key isn't it weight is key and uh oh. seems pretty good as far as i can tell in my limited skills oh yeah, oh, yeah. nice throttle response when you do go on the power you know, it's actually, even in the off-road mode, I thought it might spin up a little bit more than that, but it's really curbing the power. And on the KTMs, when you've got them off-road mode, it'll let you open it up, it'll let it spin a little bit more freely, but it seems this is locking it down a little bit. Oh, yes. 
Uh, there's a quite a steep downhill bit here. Do I risk <laughs> taking Wheels motorcycle? Wheels is motorcycle down the off-road, the steep off-road. <sighs> well, looks like I'm heading in that direction, so I guess my answer is yes, I do. There's also a lot of chalk around here. <laughs> Sorry, Wheels, I didn't mean to break your motorcycle. Hang on, where's the rear brake? Whoa, so the ABS is off in off-road mode. That's one thing in off-road mode, you get no rear ABS. So you've got, you're free to lock up the rear. Woo! <laughs> but the front still has ABS. Let's test it, let's tug the front. That's full of front brake. Did it lock? It's probably a bit reduced on the ABS front. Oh, okay. Let's go back to the road riding. Tarmac. Oh. Listen to that! Listen to that exhaust roar. That's airbox roar. That sounds bloody delightful. So I've still got in off-road mode. So let me get a mode button. Yeah, indiv oh, you've got the individual mode, like the RS660. Explorer mode. Urban. Off-road. So I think we'll go... We'll go Explorer. We'll go Explorer. So I think this must be the first Aprilia ever not to have a sport mode or a track mode. There's not even a sport mode on this. So, let's settle down for a little bit of road action. Because when you're going off-road, there's never anywhere, not in the UK anyway, where you can just do 100% going off-road. You've always got to end up on the tarmac between lanes. So you want the bike which is pretty reasonable on the road as well. And this is what this bike is, you know, a 50-50 I would say. And on the road, yeah, you've got to be a little bit careful, of course, because you've got the tyres. You've got a pure, I think, 50-50 tyre, so you're not going to be throwing this bike around. But, saying that, it feels pretty agile. It's got a 21-inch front, so again, very off-road focused with the 21. But, yeah, it feels nice, it's comfortable. The seat feels quite low, actually. For such a big bike, the seat feels quite low. The pegs feel... You know, I'm, I'm sat quite upright, you're not sort of leant forward, you're not in a very sporty position, it's just a very comfortable position. Actually, it feels quite similar to the uh, Ducati, to the V4S I was riding last week. It's a similar sort of riding position. The bars aren't quite as wide as the Ducati, but uh, yeah, it's a similar position. The seat feels really well padded, but I can tell it's quite thin. So with my big bum, after a couple of hours, I'm going to feel that. But, you know, it needs to be thin to give it that agility off-road when you stood up. So I'm going to excuse it that on this bike. So this bike is based on the RS660. It came, was it, two years ago the RS660 came out. And then they launched the Tuono 660 last year. And then the very end of last year, you know, they've come out with this Tur Turag. Tur Turag? They've come out with the Turag. And... This engine is a peach. This 660 parallel twin is an absolute peach. I love it in the RS660. In the RS660, it puts out 100 horsepower. In this, it puts out 80 horsepower. So it's detuned a little bit, which uh, I can sort of get why they've done that, because they wanted that power lower down the rev range. So for an off-road bike, that does make sense, but it's down 20 horsepower in the RS660 and 20 horsepower down compared to the KTM 890 Adventure as well. So, but it's still a couple of horsepower more than the Tenere, the Yamaha Tenere 700. So, to power is 80 horsepower, torque is 70 newton meters, so a, a decent amount of torque. And you can feel that. Actually, it feels pretty darn quick. Let's see what 80 horsepower feels like. That's 80 horsepower and a 204 kilo bike. So, I mean, it's not, it's not the quickest thing I've ever ridden on two wheels. Quite slow changing gear because I've got the big off-road clumpers on. It's quite hard to get under the gear lever. Front brake actually feels pretty sharp. I'll have to look what the braking system is, but it's actually pretty, pretty sharp actually on the front. Normally these sort of adventure bikes are a bit softer, certainly the off-road ones, but that's got quite sharp brakes for an adventure bike. 
Right, another lane. Wheels are going to kill me. Wheels are going to absolutely kill me for taking us down all these lanes. <laughs> yeah, we've got a little bit more spin up now. Woo! Also got a load of cyclists coming, so let's get over here. Cheers, thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Right, stand up. This is a bit more gravelly, this one. Whoa! A little bit of step out on the rear there. Yeah, it's... Uh, it feels nice. It doesn't feel too heavy. This sort of road, this sort of lane, should I say, where you just got dirt and a bit of gravel. And a, I think this is really what this bike's designed for, isn't it? This feels very nice. The suspension is fully adjustable. I think if you're going to do a lot of off-road, I would say this is a little bit stiff how this is set. This has obviously been set up for more of a road focused riding at the moment. It's a little bit stiff maybe for off-road. So if you're coming out, you know, doing a proper day of off-road, I'd suggest you, you wind the preload back a little bit and have a, and have a play with the twiddlies. But I have to say, even still, feels pretty good <laughs> hey whoa yeah plenty of power there in that traction mode did i put it on two did i or three was it it's letting it spin up a bit more now it's not as sophisticated as the uh, 890 adventure off-road system i have to say i think that's a bit more sophisticated than this this feels a little bit more rudimentary you know it's just dialing back the traction Whereas the 890 felt like you could, it would spin like a couple of full revolutions of the of the tyre before reining it back, you know, very uh, very well controlled. I would say this isn't quite as sophisticated as that. But you compare it to the Tenere, I'm not knocking the Tenere, but I mean that's got nothing. I don't think that even has traction control, it's just got ABS. Very basic. This has at least got those those electronics and it's only a thousand pound more expensive than the Tenere. Woo -hoo -hoo. Oh yeah, you got to stand up. It's, you can't put that weight through the seat. You need to stand up on the off-road by the look of it. It's not like a full-on enduro that can just soak up anything. This needs a weight through the pegs to get the most out of it. Oh yeah. It's a beauty. Sorry wheels, I will clean it before I'm done. Don't worry, I'll give it a wash. Don't worry, I won't give it back to you in this state. I'm filming the walk around now before the bike got a bit too dirty, but here she is in a relatively clean state. A lot of people saying they don't like the look of this. What an ugly bike, but actually in these colors, I do think it's pretty decent. I mean, it's modern looking. Um, you know, it's not pretty, but I think it's certainly prettier than the 890 Adventure certainly prettier than that and it's sort of a top heavy a bit of an africa twin sort of look to it with a high front end and stuff but i actually think it looks pretty reasonable and let's talk you through some of the details starting at the front we have a very off-road focused 21 inch front wheel with some pirelli scorpion tires which i think are you know very off-road focused really these i'd say more of an off-road focus than probably an on-road focus the wheels are also tubeless so fully tubeless rims you can see the spokes are outside of the wheel you know so the spokes don't go inside the wheel so fully tubeless which is a nice touch the rear of the mudguard also comes down quite a long way to stop a lot of the muck getting thrown up within the engine but you can see even though i've only done half a lane it's already quite mucky in there the engine is a modified rs660 engine as i mentioned 780 horsepower and i think 70 newton meters of torque and they've geared it for you know more usable lower range basically and the other big change is that sump as i mentioned that sump is now a lot shallower to give the bike decent ground clearance and i think the ground clearance is pretty decent i think it's about 240 millimeters of ground clearance on the bike which is pretty good the rear of the bike we have this sort of strange little rear light design with sort of leds all along here i actually quite like the look of it it's quite a slim tail to the bike again very modern looking so yeah, I like that rear light design. That's rather nice. Very deeply padded seat, very deeply padded, quite thin. You know, I guess it's an off-road machine. You know, you've got to be able to stand up. You've got to get your legs either side of it. But I suspect if you're going to be on this, in the saddle for more than a couple of hours, if you're like me, you've got a bigger bottom, you're going to feel that. But it's a very deep seat. 
You know, it's certainly not like an enduro bike seat. There's plenty of padding there. Same size TFT as the RS660. And you've got, you know, all sorts of features on here with the different modes and stuff. But it's a nice, clear layout, the display on this, I have to say. Switch gear is the usual Aprilia affair. I mean, this is exactly the same switch gear as what's on the RSV4. You know, this is this, this, this switch is on the RS660, the Tuono, and even the new RSV4. So it shares all of the model range of switch gear. And on this bike, for the price point, I think it's pretty good. But I think it feels a bit cheap if it's going onto a £22,000 motorcycle like the RSV4. But on a 10 grand bike, it's nice switch gear. The screen is quite deep, but there's no adjustment on the screen. It's um, non-adjustable. And then the front light, we have this sort of very, let's call it interesting design with the, uh, the LED running lights. I, I think it's definitely one of those looks that grows on you. I actually think it's all right. I actually quite like it. As I say, it's a very futuristic look and I actually think it go, you know, it's in keeping with the rest of the bike. It's the same guy styled this who's, as who styled the V85. You know, that sort of retro-y looking adventure bike that Moto Guzzi do, that Hippo Drones has got. But I think, I quite like the style of this. I don't think it's too bad at all. So anyway, enough chatter. I'm going to jump back on. Ah, very enjoyable. Very enjoyable at a off-road jaunt. So if you like that sort of thing, and if you're interested in this bike, I presume you do like that sort of thing. And uh, I'd say, you know, it's a, it's a big event. It's 187 kilos this dry, so... You know, it's not a 100 kilo enduro bike, and you can feel that. I was actually out on those lanes on a 100 kilo enduro bike last week, so, you know, I can tell the difference. But, you know, you just go a little bit slower, you take a little bit easier, you stay off the very, very hard, hardcore lanes, and you can do it, you know? I can't compare it to the Tenere's off-road capability because I've never ridden a Tenere. What I'd like to do, perhaps with Greg, is do a comparison video with this and the Tenere, or this and the 890 Duke, or all three. A three-way comparison, maybe with Womble as well. We'll take all three out, because this one sits in the middle. You know, price-wise, this one sits in the middle of those two bikes. I think the Tenere is 9,600 or something like that. This is 10,600, so an extra thousand pound, but this does have the full suite of electronics, you know, TFT, longer travel suspension. It's only 210 mil suspension travel on the Tenere on the front and 200 on the rear. This has got 240 front and back. So I think this will be more capable off-road than the Tenere. The 890 Duke is two, I think it's 12,600. So it's 2,000 pound more expensive, more or less than this. Is the 890 Duke worth £2,000 more than this? That's the question, isn't it? So perhaps it's a, a three-way comparison with those could be of interest, but we're not very good off-road riders. So <laughs> if you really want to compare the, you know, the off-road ability of the bikes, then uh, that's probably not the review for you, but we can have a good roundup of them all overall with a little bit of green lane like I just did there. The problem with these dual-purpose bikes, let's hear it, sounds good hey eh? doesn't that sound good but the problem with these dual purpose bikes is you know they've got to do two things so they're a, they're, they're a, a jack of all trades but a master of none to coin a, a well-used phrase and you know with the 21 inch front you know I, I can't really push this on the road not with these tires you know it, it changes direction pretty good you know it feels pretty agile but when you brake you know you've got a lot of dive on the suspension because you've got that long travel so it's always a bit of a compromise so i think if you're interested in a bike like this you really have to ask yourself are you going to be using it off-road because i do think it's a lot of wasted potential you know and, and you're losing road manners to get that off-road ability so ask yourself that do you want to go off-road on it if the answer is no and you're really buying this bike for the look then there could potentially be better bikes you know which are more suited for that but if you like the look of this it certainly sounds good Ooh, sharp brakes sharp brakes and off-road tires it's never the best combination okay let's get on the motorway and see what it's like i can tell the wind noise off this screen hitting my peak helmet it's making a hell of a row already when you're doing 50. let's see what it's like sat at 70. 
on the motorway. It's very noisy. Getting a lot of wind. I'm six foot two, 19 stone ish. <laughs> a little bit off. And I'm getting a lot of wind off the screen on my peak. I, I, I don't really get adventure helmets when you're going to use them on the road because you always get a lot of buffeting on the peak, don't you? But let's get to 70 and see if you can still hear me. Yeah, that's quite noisy. The same. The screen is non adjustable, so I can't adjust how much air I'm getting. What it has got quite nice is a cruise control it's also got that rather irritating flashing green light when you have the cruise control on that Aprilia's all do so you think you've left your indicator on but it's just to, know, to tell you the cruise controls enabled I don't know, that, that annoys me I don't know why they can't change that let's turn it off so the Aprilia Touré what do I think it's actually it's very nice actually it's a really comfortable ride and you can throw it around, you know, you, I can throw this around. I'm just not very confident, I've not got much confidence in the tyres, that's why I'm holding myself back a little bit. But the actual, apart from a bit of suspension dive, it's actually got really nice road manners. Like I say, the front brake is a little bit sharp, that's the only thing I can say I'd change really. But it changes direction quick, for a 21 inch, for a 21 inch front wheel as well, it's surprisingly good and it sounds lovely. So there we go, the Torag 660. I'm actually pretty impressed with this. It's a lovely ride, a really comfortable ride. Let's have this go. Enough power, I mean it's fast enough. It's amazing this engine to be honest. It's a shame it's not got the full 100 horsepower, but I do get why it's de-restricted. The only thing I think I'd change is the front brakes are a bit sharp. And because they're sharp, you know, it makes that suspension dive a little bit worse, so it's a bit easier to unsettle the bike in the corners, but... <laughs> the sound of it, yeah, it's really, really nice. It's a really good finish, really good quality. I can't say nothing bad about this bike for £10,600. It's lovely if you're looking for this sort of middleweight adventure bike with a serious... I think this has a serious off-road side to it, you know. I mean, I've only done a couple of little green lanes today, but I think this has got some proper serious off-road potential, this, with that 240mm travel suspension and lightweight. So, you know, yeah, very nice. If you want to ride this exact bike, this is Wheels Motorcycles Demo. So go on their website, I'll put links below. £10,600, take this bike out for a spin and see what you think. Let me know what you think to it in the comments if you've ridden it after seeing this video. Don't worry, I will be getting out on the GSX-R for a ride soon. I know you haven't seen that video yet, I keep saying I'm going to ride it. I will be getting out on that very soon, I'm just waiting for the salt to clear. Actually it looks pretty decent today, the salt wise, so there will be a GSX-R first ride video coming. I've not even ridden it myself yet, it's coming believe me. But thanks for watching guys as always and I will see you on the next video. Cheers. Come on, work it, work it girl. Show me that headlight, oh yeah. Show me those headlights. Beautiful.